In the previous episode, we examined the moons around our outer planets and saw some good examples of expansion, and equally some examples that show no expansion. These all had one thing in common. They are all icy moons. So let's now examine the inner solar system and see if we see the same signs as before. Let's start by examining Mercury. Mercury appears to have a solid silicate crust and a mantle with a solid iron sulphide outer core and a deeper liquid core layer with a solid inner core. It has a diameter of about 5,000 kilometers, making it smaller than both Ganymede and Titan. Its density is one of the highest in the solar system, slightly lower than Earth. Given Mercury's size, this is all the more remarkable and means it must have a very dense core. It is thought that Mercury's core has a higher iron content than any of the other major planets in our solar system. Mercury's surface is similar in appearance to the Moon, showing extensive plains and heavy cratering. If we examine a topographic map, we can see that the Northern Hemisphere seems to be much newer compared to the equatorial region. There appear to be higher elevations across this equatorial region, which is heavily cratered. From initial inspection, it is not possible to see any shape conformity across the various elevated sections. If we examine a topographic map of the Northern Hemisphere and zoom in a little, we will start to see very long linear lines etched across the surface, with many not having a clear start or end. Many lines seem to crisscross along the entire surface. Some do seem to originate from smaller craters, and yet some of the larger ones have none. Some craters even have these lines running exactly through the centre. It is also possible to see some deeper lines which do not extend as far. If we cut one section out and move it across, it is possible to see that there might be some alignment, but the edges are nowhere near as clean as the examples we have seen on the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. There is some interesting alignment in the mountain area, but this may just be coincidence. We can also speculate that maybe the entire basin, which is blue, is a zone of expansion, so we could move the top section lower. Again, we do not have very strong alignment, and we are still left with a blue void area. Let's examine some of the other images of Mercury. If we examine this image of a crater, we can see it radiates lines away from it, and there are also a series of larger cracks closer to the crater itself. Further out, we can see cracks that seem to encircle the crater, similar to those that we saw on Callisto. Here we have a different view of the same image. Now it looks as if the crater is offset from the main cracks. Examining these cracks in more detail reveals a complex pattern that often shows no shape conformity. In this image, we can see more examples of the long lines that seem to encircle the entire planet. At this stage, I would say that what we are seeing here is not the same as we have seen on the other moons. The notable difference here, of course, is that we are not dealing with an icy world. It may be that the expansion mechanism is different, or that there simply is no evidence of it. The alignment of both the North Pole is to me not strong enough evidence to suggest anything. The strange lines that crisscross the surface is very intriguing. Let's move on and examine Venus. It is a rocky body similar to Earth. It has a very similar size to Earth, just a little smaller. The surface of Venus shows evidence of extensive volcanism. About 80% of the surface is covered in smooth plains. Two highland continents make up the rest of the surface. A network of fractures and faults covers much of its surface. The absence of evidence of lava flows accompanying any of the visible calderas remains an enigma. There are very few impact craters indicating that the surface is relatively new. When we examine the surface features, we do indeed see signs of cracks, and also signs of etching across parts of the surface. We see large channels that show some shape conformity across them. It is possible to move these larger areas together, but some parts show extensive fracturing, making this process extremely difficult. Let's examine a topographic map to see if this shows up any additional insights. Here it is easier to see the outline of what might be the older terrain, with the blue areas marking possible areas of expansion. If we cut the areas of crust out into the larger visible areas, 
it is relatively easy to show that there is a lot of shape conformity across the entire globe. With a little effort, you can see areas that are close and aligned. If we start in the central area, we can move the smaller piece to fit the lower piece. This is not a perfect fit. But now we can rotate this group a little, and we can find a good alignment on the white line. The piece to the left now aligns very nicely with the edge of the rotated piece. We can also see the sign that's above it may have been torn off from the main section. Moving this joined piece upwards, we can see some alignment, and you can imagine that the top section might have been folded over the section that we have just moved upwards. Let's focus on the bottom right. There is reasonable conformity in these two pieces which we can join together. You will also notice the sinus which we can wrap around the other section. At the top right we have a smaller section that could be rotated back into the northern section, just like this. This then allows us to move the other pieces closer together forming a much smaller original landmass. Here it is important to point out that the pieces do not align as perfectly compared to Ganymede, but in some sections there is good conformity and a continuation of some of the surface features. Let's move on to examine the Moon. This shows very similar features to the ones we saw on Mercury. There are craters that have long radial lines running away from them. There are large plain areas and areas that are more heavily cratered than others. There are examples of cracks or etch marks. If we examine a topographic map, we can see higher and lower areas, but the edges are heavily cratered, meaning there is no clear edge. If expansion did occur in the plain areas and pushed the high material away, there is little evidence of this process on the surface, compared to the other examples that we have seen. There are some areas that may show a weak shape conformity, but the evidence is not strong enough for me to say that this shows a sign of any sort of expansion. Let's move on and examine Mars. It is about half the diameter of Earth with a surface area that is nearly equal to the dry landmass of Earth itself. Mars is thought to have a mantle of silicate which appears to be dormant. It is seismically active, however. When we examine a surface map of Mars, there are many distinctive features, vast areas of plains in the northern hemisphere and larger mountainous areas below this. There is a large canyon cut out on one side that we have previously discussed in connection with an electrical discharge event. The surface is once more littered with little lines that run hundreds of kilometres and often are intersected by others that run at slightly different angles, similar to what we saw on Mercury. Many seemingly start and terminate in the middle of nowhere. If we examine the large canyon, this is unlike anything we have seen previously. Along the entire edge we have a more complex network of smaller cracks which are more reminiscent of Lichtenberg patterns. One end terminates in a very complex series of ridges that intersect each other. Once more we see some shape conformity, but equally, for a lot of the areas in these cracks, there is none. The main canyon shows very little shape conformity from one side to the other, with some sections seeming to enlarge and then contract. If we follow the canyon to the other side, we see it widens dramatically at the end. There are also other similar structures that seem to join with it, with no shape conformity at all in this particular area. In a section to the north, we see something similar to what we saw on Europa, with large chunks broken up on the surface. But the difference here is that these pieces don't all seem to match up. There are some that you could say may have fractured, but there are others that show signs of erosion. There are examples of smaller cracks that are more linear, which are strikingly different from the more river-like structures, but many do not show shape conformity. But there are examples of long ridges that do show shape conformity, and alignment of features. If we examine a topographic map, it reveals what appears as a single continent in the south, which sits significantly higher than the plains area. There does not seem to be any conformity with the slightly elevated section in the North Pole. We also see that the deepest part on the surface does not lie in the plains area, but sits in the south in a large oval depression. Is this similar to the large craters we have seen on other moons? 
This feature itself has some very strange features within it, many looking like folds of rocks, but nothing like we have seen on other moons. If the blue area in the plains is an area of expansion, is it possible that the expansion only happened on one side? Or is what we see left over from some cataclysmic event which caused vast amounts of material to be etched from the surface of Mars? If we imagine that what we see as the higher land was once a sphere, it would mean that it would have to tear as it flattened out. Is that what we are looking at here? Is it possible to take this section to the left and rotate it over to the right? For now, I'm only going to select the areas of yellow or higher. There is some conformity, but to be honest, it's not great. If we continue to roll this piece over, we do see alignment with some of the higher terrain, and the bay area might have been torn out. The problem is that we do not see any signs of this expansion in the areas in between. The cracks that we do see are all in higher areas, not the lower ones. Is it possible that the sand is covering much of this evidence? We see clear signs of electrical working across vast amounts of the surface. So is it possible that this electrical event is more recent and has hidden much of the evidence of the original expansion? It is also possible that Mars has not undergone a major expansion at all, and that the only reason there is a higher and lower part of Mars is down only to the discharge event which removed huge parts of the surface. So what does this mean? Is it possible that some planets do not undergo major expansion at all? We have seen this in the examples of the icy moons of the outer planets. Equally, some of the icy worlds have shown the clearest evidence of expansion. So is water a key here? There is speculation that Mars once had an ocean in the past, as well as underground lakes and oceans. There is speculation that Venus also had an ocean, but it too has gone now. Mercury has no visible signs of water, although they have detected ice in some of the craters on the poles, but they believe that this is created through a chemical process rather than being left over from an ancient ocean. Mercury does not really show signs of an expansion in the recent past, and this to some extent also goes for the Moon. Venus shows possible signs in shape conformity of the higher land masses and also in some of the cracked features on the surface. Mars sits somewhere in between, there is some evidence of small expansion in areas, and we can speculate about the height map showing a single slab. So where do we go from here? I think we have seen strong evidence of expansion on some of the moons and planets. Whatever the mechanism is, it is not unilateral and does not occur at the same time across all the moons and planets. It is possible that electrical events may well be the trigger that initiates it in some of the cases we have looked at. From examination of the moons and the planets, we see strong evidence of electrical scarring on almost all of the moons and planets, as well as evidence of movement of the plates on all sides leading to a conclusion it must have expanded. I also see strong evidence of repeating patterns in some of the movement of the plates, suggesting some of the structures we see may be created by the upwelling of material, like a volcano that sits on a hot spot, as the plates move across it, a new one forms later on. A lot of these do not look like volcanoes, but often look like craters, some smaller and some larger. This would rule out the idea that they are impact craters, but does that rule out an electrical discharge? Possibly not, and this may well explain why some look like craters and some do not. Could the upwelling material create an imbalance of charge at the surface that attracts the discharge to it? More work needs to be done here to look at more examples and try to map out the motion to see if this idea holds water. In the next episode I want to explore some of the theories that have been put forward for an Earth expansion and compare the models as well as discuss how each achieves this expansion process. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.